Well, hi, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great Sunday. The good news, it is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day <laughs> to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day to the lovely Lisa Leslie. Thank Greetings. you. Happy Mother's Day. Greetings to uh, Michael Cooper. Uh, obviously, a dark day for the Lakers and the franchise. Yeah. Well, Are Coop, you speechless? Coop, you, you, you said your, your feelings were hurt. Yeah, my feelings are definitely hurt. I, you know, again, the Los Angeles Lakers are two-time defending champions, and I expected more from them than what they gave, and I expected them to be a little bit more professional in losing, and, and we'll talk about that later, though. All right. Our Kurt Sandoval is in Dallas. He'll have live reports and your Laker interviews. Of course, Phil Jackson will be entering the media room in just a bit, and we will go live to Dallas. Now, entering the day, it was plain and simple. Win or start summer vacation early. Win, bring it back to Staples Tuesday, force game six and seven and pull off a miracle and do what 98 other teams have never done. Phil Jackson has never been swept in a playoff series. Andrew Bynum starting where he left off in game three. A nice spin move for the lay-in. The Lakers take an early 9-8 to eight lead. But Lisa, Kobe came out firing in the first quarter. Well, Kobe had to do that. He needed to come out showing that he was ready to play, that he was going to put the team on his back and be very offensive-minded. So I thought that was a good move for Kobe Bryant to come out and really take over. Yeah, six of eight in the first quarter for 13 points. Kobe in black mamba mode early on with a jumper in the paint. Now, Pau Gasol said he needed to snap out of it, but his struggles continue. 0 for 3 to start the game. Misses from close up, and Phil just cannot believe it. Despite Kobe's play, the Mavericks took the lead thanks to their second unit with the game tied at 19. Jason Terry with a triple. Then Paige Stojakovic from the line of plenty. And J.J. Barea caps a nice first quarter for the home team. The little jumper gives the Mavericks a 27-23 lead after the first 12 minutes. So the Lakers were in it after the first quarter. Second quarter, the Mavericks' second unit still shooting lights out. They couldn't miss. Jason Terry from the corner drops a three ball. Coop, Jason Terry leading that second unit, just killing the Lakers all day. And I can't understand the life of being how you leave a guy this open so long. Again, they left that time and time again for Dallas. But with Jason Terry, you can't leave him that wide open. Obviously, everybody's just standing around as Terry hits another one. It wasn't just Jason Terry. Paige Stojakovic also hurting the purple and gold. He connects from behind the arc. They are just doing everything possible. There you see Paige. And the party in Dallas started in the first half. That pushes the lead up to 18. Things get uglier for the champs. They leave Dirk Nowinski all alone. He bears the jumper. The lead grows to 20. Then Jason Terry caps off a great half for him and the Mavericks. His sixth three-pointer of the half. 20 points for Terry in the first half. Dallas up 63-39 at the break. Unbelievable. Dallas shooting 59% in the first half. The Mavericks bench shooting 15 of 19 for 79%. Outscoring the Laker reserves 40 to seven. Did you sense something with the Lakers in that first half? They just, they, all the steam just, you know, got sucked out of them. They really did, but you have to give Dallas Mavericks all the credit. They came out as if this was a closeout game. They shot the ball well, they scored, and basically it was like a pickup. It's what we call a drive and kick. We used to do that. You drive to the basket, draw the defense in, kick it out, and it's very hard to defend the three point line once that defense gets sucked into the paint. You want to see the second half highlights? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Second half highlights. We go. The Lakers cut into the Mavericks' lead as Ron Artest takes matters into his own hands. First, he hits a straight away three pointer. Then, Ron Ron with a nice take against Sean Marion. He gets a hoop and harm. The three point play cuts the lead to 19, 65 46. But Artest with a chance to cut the lead to 17. Misses an easy dunk attempt. Lisa, how much of a momentum killer was that? Oh, that was just like a, a, a nice in the heart right there. When Ron missed that layup, I just put my head down. I'm like, oh no. Because because that was just a symbol of what this whole series has been about. The Lakers coming up short on every possession. And right after that, there's Jason Terry continuing to connect from the land of plenty, hitting his seventh and eighth three-pointers of the game. The lead once again grows to 25 points, 71-46. Coop, why couldn't the Lakers guard the three-point shot today? You know, I think it's just what Smooth said, is that the driving kick game works in Dallas's favor. And again, you'll see a lot of those shots which you think are contested. But a great three-point shooter like Terry, Dirk, and Stojakovic, you have to be on those guys when they catch the basketball. You can't be running at them once they got it cocked and loaded. They were 20 of 32, 62% from behind the arc. Page's three ball makes it a 29-point lead. Now to the fourth quarter, the Lakers' final quarter of the season, and the Mavericks still making it a rain from behind the arc. Dirk Nowitzki hits their 16 three-pointer. Their owner is giddy. 
Then Peja is left all alone from behind the arc. And Trano, their 17th of the game. The Mavericks up 94 to 67. Then the champs start losing their cool. Lamar Odom throws a shoulder into Dirk. And uh, Elo is ejected from the ball game. Lisa and Coop, how frustrating is it to play in a ball game that you're just getting blown out late in the game? No, you know what? You have to accept uh, losing like you do winning. And when the, when the team is giving it to you like that, you still have to have some professional pride and some sportsmanship. Uncalled for play for Elo. And just moments later, JJ Barrera enters the lane, and Andrew Bynum throws a flagrant elbow at him, and he's ejected from the game. Lisa. Well, I thought that was just a bad decision for Andrew. You buy them. And I can understand the frustration, you're going down, but you don't go down like that. And that doesn't really represent the Lakers. And when it comes to being embarrassed and disgracing the whole legacy of what the Lakers stand for, that doesn't belong in that purple What were you thinking, Coop, after those two uh, plays? The same the thing right there. That does, you doesn't belong like that, and then you take it out. But he'll he'll feel this pain next year. Again, that's a terrible play by Bynum because, again, it's, it's about contesting. Had he went up and tried to block the shot and then hit the kid, then you can call it. But that right there, not even making a play on the basketball, is not in the game of uh, basketball. Remember, during the regular season, he made a similar play like that on Michael Beasley as he leaves shirtless as the Dallas bench is uh, yelling at him, I'm sure, in defense of J.J. Barrera. Just getting knocked out in this game or in this series. 122-86 is the final. A 36-point deficit, the second worst defeat mm -hmm. in Laker playoff history. Of course, the 39-point loss in the 2008 finals uh, by the Boston Celtics. That was game six, the closeout game, and I remember how dejected you were after that. <laughs> <laughs> he basically told me, Rob, I don't want to do the show. I don't want to do the show. But I was like, you got to do yeah. the show. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, we're going to take our first break. Still ahead, well, head out to Dallas where Chris Sandoval is standing by live with your locker room interviews. And we'll continue to break down with what went wrong for the Lakers in this series. A sweep by the Dallas Mavericks coming up on the Sports Zone. The simple joy of being bold. Get the jalapeno cheddar or the cheddar onion McChicken for just $1.49 each. Los Angeles, a cultural and economic center. At Bank of America, we live and work here with thousands of employees, hundreds of branches, and hundreds of ATMs. Every day, we're working to help set opportunity in motion, from supporting the revitalization of downtown LA to the Long Beach Community Foundation and White Memorial Hospital. Because when you're giving, lending, and investing in more communities across the country, more opportunities happen. Every idea we have begins with you. The way you connect. How you browse. How you share. And how you interact with the world around you. Down to the last detail, you inspire everything. Because in the end, innovation doesn't really matter. Unless it does something that really matters to you. And we are HTC. Hey, Marcel, watch this. Hey, Marcel, watch this. Hey, Marcel, watch this. Yeah, Marcel. Marcel. Hey, Marcel, are you listening to me? Marcel. Only AT&T U-verse lets you follow your favorite channels on one screen. Just $29 a month for the first six months, DVR included. In the network, there are no hard choices. The simple joy of being bold. Get the jalapeno cheddar or the cheddar onion McChicken for just $1.49 each. You're watching Sports Zone from ABC7. All right, uh, it's a dark day for the Lakers franchise as they get swept by the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, possibly Phil Jackson's final game as an NBA coach. He has said that this is his last stand. An embarrassing loss for the Lakers. Our Kurt Sandoval standing by with Andrew Bynum. Um, Maybe you can explain they, they what happened in that fourth tape, quarter. Watched how we were playing defense, and they just okay, thanks, bro. So you don't think you guys were prepared for that? Um, 
again, they, they watched us, and then they prepared for it and uh, came out and just kind of exploded it. Andrew, we're on live back in L.A. What happened on the flagrant foul? Uh, you know, I was just kind of salty about, you know, the guy <coughs> keeps getting layups in the lane. Can you tell, was their three-point barrage, they had an NBA record 23-pointers. Was that, they were hot, or was it partly lack of defense? No, um, they studied for our defense, and um, Dirk's drawing double teams. Their whole thing was drawing kick, and we were always in on rotation. Today was a 77th playoff game in four years. How much did that contribute to what looked like a very tired Laker team? Um, I, don't, I don't think it did. I think we, we got kind of demoralized by losing, you know, game one and then coming out and losing game three in the last five minutes. And then we, um, you know, just kind of didn't play D. Phil Jackson's final game as a Laker head coach, obviously disappointed that he couldn't win a championship. W what will you take out of what Phil brought to you in this franchise? Um, you know, it's unfortunate, um, but at the end of the day, we had a good ride, and, you know, um, I just hope for the best, and hope he remains healthy. Okay, thank you. It's Mavericks 14 of uh, 19 from the free throw line, but 20 of 32 from three point land. 60 is a six man. Of the year, the last couple of weeks before. Uh, LO won it this year and uh, 32 points in 24 minutes, 9 of 10, uh, three point line there, Lisa. Well, he's always showed up for big games and we've always known for him to score a lot of points in the fourth quarter, but he came out when he first stepped into the game, he was ready to play and you could tell when he hit those first two three pointers, you had to know where this guy was at all times. The fact that he's standing, planted, and he's just getting people running out at him, Jason Terry came to win and close this game out. Jason Terry, Leading the way with 32 points, and that bench mob was just incredible today. They combined for 86 points. 86 points is the Lakers' total. And Coop, uh, elaborate once again on the three point shooting of the Dallas Mavericks. Sometimes people talk about three point shooting, they say it's fool's gold, but uh, it was definitely gold today for them. But you have to understand who the Dallas Mavericks are. They're a three point shooting team. I mean, the, you know, their, their league scorer is a great three point shooter, and then you add these other ones around them. This team likes to drive, get into the middle, get the defense to collapse, and then kick it out for shooters. And the Lakers seem like they couldn't make that adjustment to stay home. Again, you can always come back with the team scoring two points. Those are demoralizing and they, they're kind of deflating three-point shots, especially when they're hitting time and time again. And Lakers never could uh, get that together as far as staying home on those uh, on the shooters. All right, we heard from Andrew Bynum about his ejection. Uh, let's go live to Dallas. Kurt Sandoval now uh, talking to L.O., who was also ejected from today's game. I would give it all up to be able to play in a championship round. Lamar, not like you to get ejected. What happened there? I was a little embarrassed. You know. Lose your cool a little bit? Yeah, when I went to go fill the rim out, how Dirk, you know. You know what I'm saying? They were already up 30. And, you know, I didn't mean anything by it. How what are you going to remember the most about playing for Phil Jackson that turns out to be his last game? Um, there's the moments, you know, history, being part of it. Um, you know, winning and losing the championship, and being victorious. Lamar, why were they able to hit 23 pointers tonight? Excuse me? Why were they able to hit 23 pointers tonight? I mean, they played their, you know, they played their butts off. And they played. How you supposed to play in a closeout game? How about on the opposite side? All know? right, Rob, we'll go back to you. Phil Jackson in his final press conference as Lakers head coach is just coming to the podium. Rob, back to you. Okay, Curtis, uh, let's uh, take it live back to Dallas in the interview room. There's Phil. One of the guys that did really frustrate us today. Uh, other than that, um, you know, the Lakers will have to go back and. Um, Put it back together again to, you know, have a team that comes back and challenges next year. Questions? Are you stunned that six days ago the Lakers were you talked about as the favorite to win the West, and here you're sitting now? No, I'm not. Why not? Um, I think I told you guys all along that Dallas is a very good team. We had the same record they had during the season, and uh, you know they played better as a team than we did. You had said a couple of times during the season that, or at least expressed some doubt about your own team. 
And were you kind of worried in the back of your mind after the New Orleans gave you such a, a hassle in the first round that this you know might happen? Well, you know, there's a way we could play that, uh, that we could win ball games. Uh, we had to play a style that was refined and a pace that was ours. Um, we were able to do that for three and a half quarters, uh, both the first and the third games in the series, but we weren't able, weren't able to finish them off. And, you know that's the difference. Um, perhaps Dallas is a little deeper team, a little more talented off the bench than we were, um, and it, it came to bear during the course of this playoffs. Have you coached your final game? If so, what are the emotions of the moment? It feels really good to be ended in the season. To be honest with you, um, I came back this last year with some trepidation. You know, Kobe's knee was an issue, and obviously our team was older. Um, the thrill of trying to chase a three-peat is always an exciting thing. Uh, but yes, I, I knew it was a big challenge for this team to, to three-peat. We've gone to the finals and to go back twice and win it uh, after losing in 08. Um, puts a lot of strain on a basketball club um, from all angles, personalities, uh, spiritually, physically, emotionally. Um, getting charged up for game after game and, and uh, assault after assault when you go in and play teams. So, you know, it was a challenge, a, in a, a challenge bigger than we could meet this year. Are you a final game, Ocean? This, this was your last game? Was this your final game? I haven't answered that, have I? Uh, <laughs> and you're not going to force me to answer it. So, but yes, I, this is uh, in all my hopes and uh, uh, aspirations are. This is the final game that you know I'll coach, and you know this has been a wonderful run. Um, you know, I go out with a sour note after being fined $35,000 uh, this morning by the league, so that's not fun. And you know, having a, a you know feeling like I've been chased down the freeway by them. But <laughs> as Richard Nixon says, you won't be able to kick this guy around anymore. Phil, I know you're not a uh, sentimental guy, but what would you tell the team in the locker room just now? They we're disappointed the way we finished the game. Yeah, we wanted to have a, a good game. I didn't like the way uh, Andrew and Lamar finished it, like I mentioned just now. Um, we ran into a buzzsaw today. Sometimes, you know, you can't get a win. You'd like to have an opportunity to challenge, but we didn't. You were trying all the timeouts and everything else <coughs> in the first half. As this game got away from you, and you're sitting there realizing it's your last game, what's going through your head? Well... You know, we had nine stops in succession, I think, in the beginning of the second half. And that's what I asked the club to do. Come on out and get some stops. You know, make them have to think about scoring. And let's get ourselves going offensively. <laughs> you know, we, we didn't get that other part going. We got our defense going a little bit. And, and our starters, you know, proved who they were. But we just couldn't could get scoring. That's when I knew that it was going to be a difficult uh, Phil, uh, challenge to, to finish that game. Phil, Excuse me. Uh, would you dispute any assertions that uh, you guys quit out there in any way, shape, or form, given the magnitude of the game for them and you know, for you? Well, there's a couple. I, I felt there's a couple players that felt daunted by the energy in the game and just, uh, you know, their game was depressed. I don't know if they were personally, but you know, I really felt that there was a couple players that just didn't step into the performance that I'd like to see them step into. Phil, you commented on the coaching job. Rick Carlisle did a great job out there coaching. Um, you know, their little zone was uh, effective today. It, had, it wasn't effective most of the games, but today it was effective in the second quarter. Um, you know, he used his players, Stoiko and um, Terry and uh, Berea, effectively off the bench. Uh, their defense was capable of our shutting our big guys down in the paint, although last game we. You know, kind of smothered them in the paint, but today we couldn't get it done. So the last time you lost to the Celtics, team, with most of the team lost, or came back, was able to win two championships. And this group, a little bit older now, is simply being recharged and maybe re-energized be enough, or do you think there need to be major changes to the roster? Well, that's not my decision to make. You know, that's Dr. Buss's, and ultimately with uh, Mitch Kupchak, they'll put it together. But it's a great franchise, and we all know that they always come back and... Uh, you know, get themselves back in the race so the Lakers are, are going to survive and do well.
All right, there's Phil Jackson talking to the media live in Dallas after the Lakers get swept. He says it's a sour ending, uh, especially after getting fined $35,000, in case you were wondering why. Yesterday, Phil Jackson made some comments to the media about the way the officials were allowing Dallas to, uh, to post up uh, Pau Gasol or defend Pau Gasol in the paint. So that's why he was fined $35,000. A sour ending, as he says. <laughs> and he didn't really say definitively, this is my final game. He kind of left it open just a bit. Now, Elisa, what a legacy is left. I mean, he brought us five NBA championships. And he brought up a great point, the fact that the Lakers are coming off. They lost. They went all the way to the finals and lost in 08 against Boston. That's one full season winning back-to-back -back championships. And then, really, all of us as fans expecting them to get back to the finals and win really would have been a, going to a fourth final. That's a lot of basketball and a lot of high expectations for anybody. So I thought we really have to take our hats off to the Lakers. Even though they went down, they didn't have much of a fight. They probably, from a human perspective, didn't have anything left in the tank. They spoiled me. I want more. <laughs> I want more smooth. I expect more. That's what I want. But again, you can't win them all. And that's the fun part about sports is there's always next year. That's the thing about being in Los Angeles. Uh, standards are so high that's when right. it comes to the L.A. Lakers. We're going to take another break. Still ahead, we'll continue to dissect this uh, series for the Lakers. Plus, we'll head out to Dallas with Kurt Sandoval standing by live in the Lakers locker room coming up on the Sports Hub. Sam begged and pleaded, so I sent him to camp. We'd earn lots of points with our new city thank you card. And I put them to good use. He told me about his bunkmates and how he signs up for every activity. He even hangs out with the camp director. Just like that. The new City Thank You Premier Card gives you more ways to earn points. What's your story? City can help you write it. I am so sorry. Let's just think of warm things. My new steak grilled sandwich. By big out with tender steak, grilled onions, and bourbon barbecue sauce. All covered with hot, melty cheese on grilled artisan bread. Hot? Steaky? Toasty? Melty? This isn't working. I'm just getting hungry. That's working. Oh! That's sorry. Make your digital life even better with Time Warner Cable. Switch to digital TV with HD for as low as $33.33 per month for one year. Call 1-855-TWC-HDTV. Get access to fee-free HD. Want more? We're 3D ready. Great programming for your 3D TV, including 3D on demand. Ask about optional whole house DVR. Your digital life made better with digital TV from Time Warner Cable. Call 1-855-TWC-HDTV. And get digital TV for as low as $33.33 per month. Does a new Mercedes-Benz seem a little out of your reach? Then you should consider a platinum-certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz from Fletcher Jones Motor Cars. Fletcher Jones Motor Cars selects only one out of every three Mercedes to qualify for a rigorous certification process. Our platinum-certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz have been reconditioned to the highest factory standards. As I said, Fletcher Jones offers only the best of the best certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz. The rest, unfortunately, end up somewhere else. Fletcher Jones Motor Cars. Mercedes-Benz. Newport Beach. You're watching Sports Zone from ABC7. And welcome back, everybody. Hope you're having a great uh, Mother's Day, moms out there. Hope uh, your family spoiled you. Um, obviously, my mom's back in Hawaii and watching the uh, Lakers game. She watches Sports Zone as well. And uh, she was saying that the Lakers better win for all those loyal moms who are big Laker fans. Yes. I know she's very disappointed out Happy there. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out yeah, there. All the moms out there. Happy birthday, Grandma. Jean, yeah. my mom. Happy birthday. I mean, Mother's Day. What did what? you do Mother's Day, Smooth? We're going to dinner. Oh, We're going okay. to go eat. You didn't yeah. get a breakfast with flowers or anything like that? Cool. Don't worry about what's going on in my house. I, my <laughs> husband got this covered. <laughs> hey, babe. He's just trying to avoid talking <laughs> about the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, what about the play of Kobe Bryant today? Coop, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he would like to put the team on his back, but just couldn't get the uh, support around him. He has only had 17 points today. Well, I thought Kobe did a great job, as we talked about last night, of him getting started early, and I thought he did. But once he started coming, they started squashing in on that defense. Defense and started crowding him and made it difficult. And again, Kobe can only do so much. How much uh, gas does he have left in the tank, do you think? I think Kobe is a great player, and people don't recognize Kobe's been hurt really all season. But he's a fighter, he's a winner, and he's come to play every game without complaining. He's twisted his ankles twice 
We saw him go down, get back up. Kobe is a great player. He's a fighter, and I thought he did all that he could do this season. Now, Pau Gasol, uh, we're waiting on him. Uh, Chris Danibal standing by. We're still waiting on Pau Gasol. Yeah, well, so, so how do you explain it, Lisa? Pau in his personal life. I don't know what's going on with Pau, but Pau's my boy. I love his post game. But you know what? We just didn't really see the Pau that we were used to from last season. He hasn't shown up. Whatever's going on in his personal life has truly affected his game at work. He's done so much for the Lakers over the last several years, Koopa. Does he deserve all this criticism? Well, it, it comes with the territory. You know, with your Los Angeles Lakers and your winning championship, people expect more and they expect you to do what you're supposed to do. But again, I didn't think he really asserted himself in the low post. Uh, he, as you see, he hit jump shots there, but he wasn't the power that we saw last year that got down in the paint and really took, it to, took the ball to the basket. A lot of mileage on his tires as well, Lisa. Now, um, what did Dallas do defensively to stymie the Lakers? Well, they did a good job of really keeping the Lakers out of the paint. They manned the paint well and really not allowing the bigs to get the ball. As you see there, we tried to force passes in. I think they were aware that the Lakers wanted to get the ball into the paint. They were able to force them into turnovers. And then, you know, the Lakers really never got into their comfort zone, whether it was the triangle or the pick and roll. Nothing really worked effectively for the Lakers because of their ability to double team and then rotate. But lastly, the Lakers didn't shoot a three ball well, which really allowed uh, for a Dallas team to really shrink in. They, they covered the paint great against the Lakers. But you know what, watching this team all year long, this is a team with active defensive hands. Terry, Kidd, all those guys, Sean Merriam, they're active with their hands. Chandler, they're long. Uh, they're sticky, they can get up off the floor. So again, I thought that their defense really hindered the Lakers a lot. The number one thing, Rob, yep. they were hungry. They yep. wanted it and they hustled. The Lakers never got an uncontested shot. They didn't want to come back to Los Angeles. And uh, how great of a job did Rick Carlisle do in this series? Well, again, he's a great coach. And, you know, like he had this team scouted and he had them ready to play. Jim Carrey? Yep. <laughs> but you know what I thought Rick Car Carlisle did most is really get the Dallas team to buy into playing defense. Before, and I thought the Lakers didn't respect Dallas because they thought they would do what they usually do, and that is try to score more points, not really defend them. The Lakers usually have outscored them. Dallas really changed their whole character. Playing defense, shutting down the paint, that was something new for them, and that, a lot of that credit goes back to their coach. You know, um, Kobe Bryant, after uh, the Game 3 loss, was saying that, call me crazy, but I think we can still win this thing. And, you know, I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be just so apropos that uh, Phil Jackson, one of the greatest coaches in all of sports, 11 championships, he has that one other thing under his belt, the only team to come back, 03. I never years. thought but they could, Rob. No. You know why? Because the Lakers have shown, and we're, as Lakers fans, we're so confident in our team. We love them. We want to believe, but it's like a battered wife who stays. We knew that there was something wrong with this Laker team the whole season. Mm -hmm. Christmas, we knew it. But we didn't say too much about it, like, oh, they're going to be okay. The fact of the matter is that the Lakers, there's something wrong at home. You always kind of wonder I what... I said it. Something's wrong in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that what Andrew Bynum said, there was trust issues, didn't have to do with what was going on on the court, maybe stuff that was going on behind closed doors? Go ahead, Coop, you scared? No, no, I'm That's not scared. Right. I'm Something's a, I'm wrong a, in the locker room. Something's wrong with the players. I don't know what it is. A lot of people don't know what it is, but when somebody does a little tell-all book, we'll find out later. Because, Coop, you got There's a problem. Yeah, because you have to wonder what happened to that team that won 17 of 18 coming out of the All-Star break. Right. Well, I think it started back in uh, the Christmas game against Miami that they weren't fired up and something was happening there for them not to come out with some type of spirit and right. play hard especially at home and beat that team that told me a lot about the Lakers. All right we're going to take another break we're going to step aside still ahead did we witness a changing of the guard in the Western Conference and much more to 86 and get swept in the second round of the playoffs Kobe Bryant now addressing the media live in Dallas. That happen ever. And, you know I think they learned from that and, um, you know, regret doing that. You know, it's not something that you want to see in the game of basketball ever. Kobe, how, how surprised are you that this, this series ends in four? You know, if you've thought about it a week ago, you probably would have been stunned, if not disbelieving. Sure. Very surprised. Uh, Kobe, uh, Phil said he could tell that the task at hand was, it looked, it looked daunting to, some, to a couple of the guys in general. Could, were you able to tell that before the game, at halftime, at any point in the game? Uh... No, not really. I mean, I, you know, started the game, I felt like we were okay. You know, they jumped out on us in the second quarter. And, um, you know, they just made three after three after three. And uh, we can never get back in it. The Mavs had 32 three-point attempts. Can you talk about why you guys have struggled mightily with your perimeter defense and getting out on the closeouts and the rotations? No, I, I mean, I, I think we've won and two in the league and defended a three-point shot. 
you know, they just did a great job with their spacing. They put their players in positions to be successful, and they maximize it. Yeah, Kobe, how much in the last three years of pressures, distractions, how much did that weigh on you guys? How difficult is it at the end of it all now? No, I, don't think, I don't think it weighed much on us. I mean, we, we've played through distractions before. I don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, it's, it's, you, know, you got to put the credit in the right place. Which is in the Mavs locker room. They 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 played extremely well. I mean, you know, they executed extremely well. Their spacing was excellent. They shot the ball extremely well, and you know, their their depth hurt us every night. It was another player stepping up and performing and making big plays. You know, the, the credit you know belongs with them. Can you talk about uh, Phil and what he meant to you and coming back and turning this team and taking it to the next level and your future? Where you go? Uh, you know, Phil, it's uh, it's tough for me to put into words. I mean, what he's meant for me. I mean, I, you know, um, I grew up, you know, under him. So the way I approach things, the way I think about things, not only in basketball but in life in general, I mean, a lot of it comes from him because I've been around him so much. So it's it's a little it's a little weird for me to think about, you know, what next year is going to look like. Do you look at Dallas in a new light after this series? You know, I look at him the same way I've always looked at him. I mean, it's. You know, they've always been a tough team. They get a rap for what happened in the finals, but I don't think there was much they could have done about that. I mean, you know, they lost to a better team at the time, but you know, they've had, um, they've won in tough environments before. They've won Game Seven in San Antonio. They, they've they've shown that they can bounce back and win big games. So I didn't learn anything new in this series. There's Kobe Bryant talking to the media live. He was referring to in the 2006 NBA Finals where they lost the Miami Heat, losing four straight games after winning the first two. We're going to take another break. Still ahead, winning two straight championships. Phil Jackson, of course, winning his 11th. And uh, what joy they have brought to the city of Los Angeles. How do they get back to that, Lisa? Well, they first need to huddle up and, uh, <laughs> you know, really come back together. We didn't see any of this. You know, last year when they won, they were always at the free throw line, huddling, talking, you know, hitting each other's head. Yeah, boy, you know, chest bumping. We didn't see any of that. So there's a problem, obviously, in the locker room. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to shake up some things. It's going to be up to Mitch Kupchak, obviously the general manager, mm -hmm. to get rid of some players. I mean, Derek Fisher maybe needs to come join me on the sideline. <laughs> you know, I think it's time for him to walk away from the game. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at it, Andrew Bynum, I don't know. Sometimes Andrew's an accident waiting to happen. I mean, he has to get completely 100% healthy for the Lakers to really be able to invest the future into them. Well, okay, so you're the GM. You make a call to Orlando. Who are you giving up? Oh, okay. Dwight, Howard. Dwight, Dwight Howard. Howard. Dwight Howard. You know what? I would take Dwight Howard and Chris Paul, revamp, keep LO. I would keep Powell, and you have Kobe. Now, from there, everybody else is based on money, how you get rid of them. Yeah, I give up mm. because Bynum is your staple. And again, if you put Bynum and Howard together, Howard can be your four. And if either one of them got in foul trouble, then you can go out and let, let them be your five. You, you're saying you're going to have Powell and Bynum on the floor at the, the same, same time? On the floor at the same time. And I'm That's shutting that middle down. Now, 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 with Kobe Bryant getting older, of course, uh, so many miles on his legs and so many injuries over the years. Andrew Bynum, just 23 years old. It seems like he's stepping up to try and be one of the leaders on this team. Can he be the centerpiece of this Laker team in the future? I think he can. I, thought, I think you saw a couple of games here where Bynum's able to get in there and do some things. He takes a lot of pressure off. Kobe. They're still arguing. We do need Chris Paul. Oh, Dallas, Paul. Kurt Sandoval, which Derek Fisher. Um, I mean, to physically run into somebody hard is not necessarily something that should be ejected for. Obviously, Andrew's play was much more dangerous with a guy going to the hole in the air. Um, it's not something that we teach, coach, encourage guys to do. I think the frustration of the moments got to both guys and uh, got to our team. And, um, you know, you have to tip your hat to Dallas there. Uh, I don't think it was any intent at all to injure any of their guys. Uh, you know, we respect what they were able to do and, and wish them the best going forward. Derek, it's been um, four years since you guys have been out this early, since Phoenix 2007. You talked about after the All Star break, that was when you guys were playing your best basketball. Why, why were you a two-time champion? Why couldn't you play more consistent? Everybody's kind of baffled by where did that team, team chemistry go that you had the past couple of years? Uh, well, you know, the interesting part about uh, each year, each season is that, you know, what Phil's been able to do is remarkable because you, if you think about it, the roster's changed pretty dramatically each year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can point to core guys, key guys that return every time. But, um, you know, you have four or five, six new faces to 
develop, you know, get them into the offense, you know, understanding how to play for a field and play in this system. Uh, those things aren't easy. And so, um, you know, it's it's worked out for us in the past. This year it didn't work out. We, we just weren't able to, um, you know, really build the things as a group <clears throat> that we needed to build to, um, you know, be able to play at our best. It's a collective thing. You can't point to any one individual and say that's the reason why this team